Try drawing the resonance structure that is suggested by this electron pushing arrow. We always start by redrawing the original picture. Then we ask, where are the electrons coming from? Well, the tail of this arrow is on the pi bond, so we know the electrons are coming from the pi bond. So we should erase the pi bond. And as soon as we've figured out where the electrons are coming from, we know who's losing the electrons, so we know who's becoming more positive. This atom lost the pi bond, so it's becoming more positive. So we put a positive formal charge on this carbon. So that takes care of the tail of the arrow. Now the head of the arrow, notice that the head of this arrow is in the middle of the sigma bond. Well, earlier we learned what it means when the head of the arrow is in the middle of a sigma bond. It means that we're forming a new pi bond between these two carbons. So let's draw in a new pi bond between these two carbons. Now we can see that this carbon on the right just gained the electrons from this pi bond. So it should be becoming less positive, so we can erase this positive charge. And now we're done with this arrow, so we can erase the arrow. And this is the correct resonance structure. Let's check that by checking the net charges. The net charge in this structure is plus one, and the net charge in the right-hand structure is plus one. Those are the same, so that's an indication that we got this correct. Now this is a new pattern that we haven't seen before. We've talked about going from a lone pair to a pi bond, from a pi bond to a lone pair, but you can see here we have a new pattern. We're going from a pi bond to another pi bond. We moved a pi bond from one place and created a pi bond someplace else. The electrons were taken from a pi bond in one place and they went to a pi bond someplace else. So let's write down that new pattern. Pi bond to pi bond. And you can see now that there are no more patterns that we have to look at. These are the only possibilities. Lone pair to pi bond, pi bond to lone pair, pi bond to pi bond. Logically speaking, the only other possibility would be to go from one lone pair to another lone pair. But we've already said that's impossible. In fact, we still have that written up here and crossed out. I hope you can see that this is X'd out. Um, it's impossible to go uh, to take electrons from one lone pair and shift them into another lone pair. That would be too big of a jump. So, of the four conceivable ways to move electrons, only three can actually happen. It's very important to keep in mind you cannot go from lone pair to lone pair. One mistake you might have made here was to take the electrons from this pi bond and try to make them into a lone pair on this carbon. Um, why can't you just take the electrons from this pi bond and make them into a lone pair over here? Well, that would really be too big of a jump, uh, but we don't need to know that. We can just see um, from the electron pushing arrow what we're supposed to do. Notice that this electron pushing arrow is again pointing towards the middle of the sigma bond. Well, we already know that that means that we're forming a pi bond. Where would we put the head of the arrow if we were forming a lone pair? If we're forming a lone pair, we always put the head of the arrow on the atom. If we had been intended to create a new lone pair, we would have put the head of this arrow on this atom. But we didn't do that. We put the head of the arrow in the middle of the sigma bond. So we know that we're supposed to form a new pi bond, not a new lone pair. Uh, let's say something else about the charges here. Um, we noticed that this carbon lost its pi bond, so it became more positive. But something that you might possibly say to yourself is you might say, well, this middle carbon is losing this pi bond too, right? This middle carbon is losing the pi bond too, so why didn't the middle carbon become more positive? Well, it's true that the middle carbon lost the pi bond, uh, but then it just formed a new pi bond on the other side, so it didn't really lose those electrons. This middle carbon um, lost the pi bond on the left, but it gained the pi bond on the right, so it didn't really lose those um, electrons. Well, this is the pattern that we're always going to see. At the, tail of the, uh, at the tail of every arrow, there's always going to be exactly one atom that's losing electrons. And at the head of every arrow, there's always going to be exactly one atom that's gaining electrons. Um, so at the tail of every arrow, there's always one atom whose charge is going to change, and at the head of the arrow, there's one atom whose charge is going to change. And then there, very often there's kind of an atom in the middle. And that atom in the middle is gaining electrons in one place and losing them in the other. So its charge is not going to change. Well, I think it's pretty clear here um, that the electrons here are really coming from this far left carbon. 
this carbon in the middle is just transferring the electron from one side to the other. So as soon as we see that this electron on the far left is changing its charge, is becoming more positive, we know for sure that this carbon is not going to become more positive because that's not the way electron pushing arrows work. Um, at the tail of every arrow, you find a single atom that's losing electrons and that becomes more positive. Um, and at the head of every arrow, you find a single atom that's gaining electrons that becoming less positive and more negative. Um, so at the tail of an arrow, you would never change the charge on two atoms. And at the head of the arrow, you would never change the charge at two atoms. That's just not the way that resonance arrows work. Try this example. As usual, I hope that you paused the video and gave that a shot. I hope that you're using all the techniques that we've talked about. I hope that you're using the redraw and modify technique and that you're always checking the charges balance at the end. So, we start by redrawing the original picture. Now we're going to modify it. Where are the electrons coming from? Well, the tail of this arrow is on a pi bond, so the electrons are coming from the pi bond, so we erase the pi bond. Remember, though, that we would never erase this bond. Now, remember that in resonance, you never break sigma bonds. Once you're down to a single bond, you can't break that. You can only break the pi bond. You can't break um, a single sigma bond. Uh, all right, so I just erased this pi bond. Now, which is the atom that lost the electrons from that pi bond? Well, this atom over here has become more positive. Well, wait a second, didn't this atom also lose the pi bond? Well, yeah, it did lose the pi bond, but we know that we're only going to change the charge on one atom. Only one atom at the tail is really uh, losing electrons. And we already know for sure that this atom uh, at the far right here is losing electrons. So we can trust that whatever electrons this carbon lost from the tail, it's going to gain from the head. Let's erase the tail. Now, where are the electrons going to? Well, the head of this arrow is in the middle of the sigma bond, which means that the electrons are going to a pi bond. Okay, and what do you know? It turned out that this carbon really did get back the electrons that it lost on the right-hand side. This carbon lost the electrons from the pi bond on the right, but it gained the electrons from the pi bond on the left. So there was no need to change the charge on this carbon. We didn't really even have to think about that. Remember that we already figured out that at the tail of this arrow, this was the atom whose charge was changing. So there's no way that there could be another atom at the tail whose charge is also changing. It just never works that way. So we just put in this new pi bond. Now there does have to be one atom at the head of the arrow whose charge is cha changing. So what's the one atom at the head of the arrow whose charge is changing? Well clearly this is the atom that just gained electrons from the pi bond. So it should become less positive. There's no need to look for any other atoms to change their charge. Uh, because you only ever change the charge on one atom at the head of the arrow. Uh, it might seem like this atom is gaining electrons because it formed a new pi bond, but that's a wash because it also lost electrons from this pi bond. And there, there's really no need to even give that much thought to the charge on this carbon, because we already, it was already quite plain that at the tail of the arrow, this was the atom whose charge was changing. And at the head of the arrow, this is the atom whose charge is changing. Um, well, at the tail of the arrow, there's only going to be one atom whose charge changes. So once you find that one atom, you don't need to worry that any other atoms' charges are changing. And at the head of the arrow, there's always going to be exactly one atom whose charge is changing. Um, so once we decided that this is the atom whose charge is changing, we don't need to worry about there being any other atoms at the head of the arrow whose charge is changing. We should always check the net charge. The net charge in the left-hand picture is plus one, and the net charge in the right-hand picture is plus one. So that balances. Try this example. We start by redrawing the original picture. Then we ask, where are the electrons coming from? Clearly, they're coming from this pi bond. So we erase the pi bond, and we look for one atom at the tail that's losing electrons. Well, it's this far right atom that lost the electrons, so it should become more positive. So much for the tail. Now we look at the head, where are the electrons going to? The electrons are going to a new pi bond, because the head is in the middle of a sigma bond, so we draw a new pi bond. And at the head, there should be one atom whose charge is becoming more negative. Well, this atom on the far left is gaining the electrons, so it's becoming more negative. Since it started with a positive charge, it just ends up with a zero charge. And now we can erase this arrow. So again, at the tail, you have to change the charge on one atom. 
this one, and at the head, you have to change the charge on one atom, this one. Uh, there's never a need to change the charge at more than one atom at the tail, and never a need to change the charge at more than one atom at the head. Uh, how should we change the charge on this oxygen? Well, are there any arrows going to or from the oxygen? No. So should we make any changes? No. Remember that you only make the changes that are dictated by the electron pushing arrow. Since we didn't draw any arrows around here, we should not be making any changes to the oxygen. So its charge doesn't change. The net charge in the left hand picture is plus one, minus one, which is zero. And in the right hand picture, we have a minus one and a plus one, which is also zero. So those balance. Uh, remember that we're not trying to draw all the possible resonance structures here. We're just drawing the one resonance structure that's indicated by the electron pushing arrow that I've given you. So there are other resonance structures that we can draw for this molecule, but we're not going to bother doing that at this time.